playing the blame game for the San Francisco 49ers. What's wrong with the team? Can they turn around their 5-5 five and five season and make that playoff run? All that more coming up on today's Locked On 49ers. You are Locked On 49ers, your daily San Francisco 49ers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On 49ers. Brian Peacock and Eric Crocker with you, as always. A very special guest on this Wednesday episode. If you know, you know more on Mr. Nick Winkler on this Winky Wednesday momentarily. Uh, I do want to thank everybody for making us your first listen on the Locked On Podcast Network. Appreciate all the everydayers out there and the new listeners alike. Please hit subscribe. It helps us out tremendously on YouTube or wherever you are listening to this podcast. We're seeing a lot of you, the regulars, the everydayers, aren't even subscribed. So we got to fix that right now. Uh, hit that subscribe button and make sure you don't miss a moment of the content all year and all off season long. Today's episode of Locked On 49ers brought to you by. Price picks. Go to pricepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use code all lowercase locked on NFL to win $50 instantly when you play $5. And now let's bring on today's guest. Nicholas Winkler. Come on, Dad. Can't believe it. Wow. Action News 8 Sports with Nick Winkler. Week, what's happening, my man? Uh, I know how you're feeling when it comes to the San Francisco 49ers. A disappointing loss. And for me, Wink. After week 11 was the first time I started to feel like, oh, you know what? Maybe the Niners aren't going to flip the switch and turn this thing around because every other loss, they're still a good team and they're going to figure this thing out. Maybe they're not going to figure it out. Where are you right now with the San Francisco 49ers after 11 weeks of the season? You got to ask yourself, is this a good football team, right? I mean, they're not very good on defense. They're not very good on offense. They're not very good, terrible on special teams, right? So where where is the good football? Right. We just lost a third divisional game that we were leading inside two minutes in the fourth quarter. That's never happened since the NFL merger. Like, it's incredible how they're finding ways to lose these football games. And you know me, I'm Mr. Special Teams, right? I'm always looking after that. I'm always watching that stuff. And I'm, I'm Mr. Mitch Wishnowski, too. I got a Winks Wish Watch. I'm always looking. He's out last week. And then people are like, oh, it's not a big deal. It's just a punter. Well, Pat O'Donnell comes in. Has an okay punt, right? First one just outside the 20. Second one, he gets inside the 20. But when it was money time, when it mattered most, with 245 left in the football game after you can't pick up a first down and extend this game and basically end the football game as a 49er football team, you got to punt. And what does he do from the 42-yard line of Seattle? He boots it into the end zone, a net of 22-yard punt, which take a look at the stats, guys. Punters in the NFL this year who punted in more than four games, so at least four games in the NFL. How many punters have zero touchbacks in the NFL? It's one. It's Mitch Wisnowski. He's never punted inside the – no touchbacks wow. for Mitch Wisnowski. And the biggest moment of the season for the 49ers on special teams was last Sunday, and Pat O'Donnell did not come through. So special teams letting him down, offense letting him down, defense letting him down. It was it was rough. It was a rough Sunday for me yesterday. I was just stewing on this, just waiting to talk to you guys. And uh, talk me talk me back, guys. Tell me why we're a good football team and why we can go to Green Bay and beat the Packers on Sunday. Well, I actually have a kind of a follow up question for you, Nick. All right, as the voice of the fan on this podcast, what are your thoughts right now on Kyle Shanahan? Because there are a lot of people going to some extremes. There are some people like, no, you know, he's a good coach. He's just kind of just going through something right now. But your, your thoughts on Shanahan really kind of moving forward right now? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question, right? Because you think before Shanahan, right, how bad the football team was after Harbaugh left. And then you think before Harbaugh and how bad the football team was. So good coaches are great for an organization. And he's been great for this organization. And I'm not ready to move on from Kyle because – you can't fully put this on Kyle, right? I mean, yeah, he put the off the defensive coordinator in place. He put the special teams coordinator in place. So he definitely has some owning up to do for a lot of these things. And the offense isn't clicking. When George Kittle isn't in this offense, they're not very good. And, yeah, they lost Ayuk very early in the season, and that had to change everything. I, Debo looks a step slow. Like, this, this team isn't looking great right now. But the people who are calling for Kyle Shanahan's job – like, just remember what it was like before Kyle Shanahan got here, guys. It, it was not good. And 
I'd say there's at least 20 other football teams around the NFL right now that would take Kyle Shanahan in a heartbeat. So I, I think it's a little premature to do that. Maybe you do need to either – because you look at him on the sideline, right? And he's out there. He's just focusing on making play calls. You know, maybe he needs that assistant head coach, the guy to, like, rah, rah the team. I also hope Robert Sala would do it after he, like, got let go from the Jets. I thought maybe he'd come in and kind of help rally the guys because is Kyle – a rallier of men? Is he a leader of men or is he just a great X's and O guys? It kind of remains to be seen. Robert Sala, in fact, not on the 49ers sideline, will be on the other sideline for the mm -hmm. Green Packers this week. A little bit more on the Green Bay Packers because it is now Packers week. Uh, and I know 49ers fans love to beat the Packers. Is it in the cards for the 49ers? The Packers can kind of wipe out the 49ers season. Like it's on the brink right now. The, the, the Niners season uh, you know, we're asking the question, is it the 49ers? Is this a lost season for the 49ers? It's going to be. And these are tough games coming up at the Packers, at the Bills, that the 49ers have to go kind of win maybe both of those games if you want to think you're going to be a team that's going to go win the division, get into the playoffs. Because uh, looking at, the, looking at the, the possibilities, and by the way, our friends at FanDuel, all of our lines that we talk about on the network and on this show come from FanDuel Sportsbook. 49ers no longer the favorites to win the NFC West. It's the it's the Arizona Cardinals, right? They're the betting favorites. And they shouldn't be. And they absolutely should be, yes. And even with that thought that I talked about, that I opened with, the, the thought that, ah, the Niners are going to flip switch, I'd still bet on the Niners to go win this division. They're going to. That's not the betting favorite anymore, and it shouldn't be. And I wouldn't bet on the 49ers to go win the division. Their, their chances to, to make the playoffs are slim right now because they don't have any of the tiebreakers. They've lost three out of the four in the division, lost, lost a bunch of NFC games as well. So how do they turn around? They have to beat good football teams. Are they a team that can beat good football teams? I think they can, but they haven't proven it. No, you're exactly right. You mentioned the division. Like the, I saw that kind of as, oh, everybody's bunched together. Like You're going to have to win the West to get into the playoffs. Probably not going to be a wild card team coming out of the West because everybody's beating up on each other. And then you look at the 49ers divisional record and it's terrible. And it's, so it's like, oh man, you got you have to go win at Green Bay. It's a must win. And then you have to go to Buffalo with them coming off of a bye and win a football game. So I'm still hopeful. I still feel like this team can figure it out. I hope they do figure it out. But when you just keep having injuries like that and they keep piling up and you see what the defense looks like without Bosa out there, you see what the offense looks like without Kittle, and it's like, who, who's going to be playing this weekend? Is Kittle going to be out there? Both going to be out there? Who knows? And if they're not, how do you go and squeak out a win in Green Bay? Because you mentioned it, Peacock. The, the Packers kind of ultimately ending the 49er season would be just the worst possible scenario as a 49er fan. Yeah, losing to the Seahawks, losing to the Packers, heartbreakers to the Rams this year. Uh, that's not the way you want to go down if you're a San Francisco 49ers fan, and you don't want to start looking at mock drafts in November either. And if we're going to lose the next two games, Croc, we're going to start talking about, hmm, Niners drafting 14 overall. Who could they draft here, right? Uh, and that's the reality of it. And I think I think if the season ended today after 11 weeks, the Niners would be drafting like 16 right now. They are in the middle of the NFL. Uh, they should be in the 20s uh, or in the 30s, right? That's where – we thought the Niners should be drafting after this season is over. And there's a lot of work to do, and it's still early enough. The 49ers can absolutely go on the run. But after the 11th week was the first time I started to think that run might not be in this football team, right? And uh, the voice of the fan, a.k.a. now a special teams analyst, Nicholas Winkler, who joins us on the show every single week, if you don't know who Nick is, uh, hangs out with us on Wednesdays. I've uh, been doing podcasts with him since before Lockdown 49ers. And uh, my former radio colleague, no wishness, Wishnowski. Is that the reason? Wink, get Wish back in the field, and, and, and does that take care of everything? Is special teams the 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 thing holding back the Niners right now, Nick? To you? No, no. As I mentioned, it's their offense is not very good. They can't score touchdowns. You know, they got Jawan Jennings, and then uh, a slow Debo and a slow McCaffrey. And hopefully, you you think McCaffrey here coming into week three of playing football. Hopefully he finds it, right? Because he's the kind of guy that can turn a whole offense around. You just got to get him the ball more in space. Stop running between the tackles. I, they bring in Jordan Mason, and he runs between the tackles, and he looks fantastic. So maybe we need to – I know that Kyle loves to only give the ball to Christian McCaffrey when he's available over and over and over, but maybe you <laughs> utilize him in a better situation. 
get him open, but pass him the ball, quick slants, quick, quick screens, you know, things like that, as opposed to let me run my, you know, injured all season running back right up the middle into these 350 pound guys, like maybe not the best thought. All right, more on Kyle Shanahan, because I've got one very interesting note from an interview I just did uh, with the godfather of modern NFL analytics and the DVOA statistic that I want to talk about concerning the Niners and Kyle Shanahan and where they are. And of course, it's Packers week. So let's start looking ahead at what the 49ers can do proactively to go start winning some football games next. Today's episode of Lockdown 49ers is brought to you by Price Picks. Price Picks is the best place to get real money sports action with over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings. Price Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all, including those folks in over 30 states like California. You pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. So run your game all season long on Prize Picks and uh, have some fun with your friends while you're at it, right? Because uh, uh, all you do is you pick two or more players and you can get together with your buddies. And it's like, okay, hey guys, who you think's going to go big? Who's going to go more than on their projections? Oh, I don't know who's going to go maybe less than on their projections. You want to go less than on Patrick Mahomes, one and a half touchdown passes. You want to go more than on Justin Jefferson, 83 and a half yards next season. Uh, you and your crew run your game with prize picks and get a special offer for our listeners as well. Promo code locked on. Download the app today. Use code locked on NFL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. That's code locked on NFL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup on prize picks. Run your game. The next segment of today's episode is brought to you by Pre Alcohol by Z Biotics. What is Pre Alcohol? It's a probiotic drink by Z Biotics. It's the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by a PhD scientist to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's, here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Pre-alcohol produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. Just remember to make Z-Biotic your first drink of the night. Drink responsibly, and you'll feel your best tomorrow. It's super easy. And every time I've tried it, uh, even going out pretty hard, right, and, uh, and having a good night out and... You can confidently plan your next day, plan my morning podcast, right? Without worry. So go to zbiotics.com slash locked on NFL, learn more and get 15% off your first order when you use locked on NFL at checkout. Zbiotics is backed with a 100% money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money. No questions asked. Remember to head to zbiotics.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL at checkout for 15% off. All right, guys, uh, I think we're all in agreement when it comes to the 49ers, what ails them could be debated and how to fix that could be debated. But I think we're all on the same page as like, look, not firing Kyle Shanahan. This team is five and five. They're not, you know, one and nine or something. Um, they're five and five. There is still time to figure some things out, but things do have to get figured out. And firing Kyle Shanahan is, you know, that's knee jerk. And um, he's been a really good coach and, and put together a fantastic team. The 49ers have been in the NFC Championship game four out of five years, right? Like, the, the, this is a well-coached team, and, and it's a good problem to have. It's first-world problems for the San Francisco 49ers and 49ers fans right now. But Kyle Shanahan does need to look in the mirror, and there are some things that can be fixed. He's not perfect. He can continue to get better, and he says it himself. You're either getting better or you're getting worse. So I would call out Kyle Shanahan and say, okay, Kyle, get better and stop getting worse this year, right? <laughs> so it, fig, whatever it is, fix it. Get it right. There's been a, so much conversation about the, you know, uh, audibles at the line, making calls at the line, protections at the line. I don't care what your process is. Get it right. Just, just figure it out and fix it because this team is underperforming, I think, clearly. Going into fourth quarter with leads and losing football games. And I just, and you guys got to check out the Peacock and Williamson NFL show, myself and Matt Williamson daily, uh, our guest, and I, I was solo on the show because Williamson covers the, the Steelers locally in the Pittsburgh area, and they're a Thursday night or so. He wasn't around on uh, Tuesday when I recorded an, uh, uh, an interview with Aaron Schatz, and he is the godfather of the DVOA statistic, and the 49ers aren't best in the league in DVOA or anything like that, but the 49ers are re ranked really high. Uh, in this metric and they're good on offense and good on defense 
And it goes along with what you see when you watch the 49ers play. It's like, well, how come you're better than the other team and you're losing the game still, right? And I asked I asked uh, Aaron, like, how sticky is this statistic year to year? And you see, like, and, and he's like, he brought up the, those those same st- Steelers. They're playing on Thursday night. He's like, Mike Tomlin is so good, and he outperforms what you think the team is going to be. And that checks out. You, The Steelers are always going to be good. You can set your watch to the Steelers being at least a 500 football team, being a competitive football team, and they get a little bit better professional quarterback play this year, and they just beat the Ravens, and they're 8-2 right now, right? The, and the Steelers are playing good football. Are the Steelers a better team than the 49ers? I wouldn't say that. The Niners are five and five. But here's what's interesting is Kyle Shanahan, even when the Niners are good, consistently underperform what their DVOA rankings and grades are. And, you know, part of it might be a little special teams. The Niners are 31 out of 32 teams in the NFL on special teams. So it could be part of it. You can win and lose games, close games, especially in the margins. But it's beyond that. It's well beyond just special teams. So, Croc, I put it to you. Why is Kyle Shanahan's teams underperforming how good they are? Because they are good teams, and he can coach up a team clearly, but they still lose some games that they should win. And they've maybe been uh, a team that you can start to – let me put it this way. You start to see a resume for Kyle Shanahan. It's really easy to say, ah, 28-3, to he can't win a Super Bowl, he blows big games. But you start to see evidence stack up against him. It's like, well, you know, it's kind of hyperbolic, but it's kind of also keeps happening. So what's going on there? I think it really has everything to do with situational football. Like the 49ers, as far as an, from an execution standpoint, they probably execute their worst when it's the most important. And that's a big issue. Uh, they don't have issues being able to blow out teams and run away with games, right? When everything is clicking uh, with the offense, they're running the ball well. They're throwing the ball well. They're great in those situations. But in the tight games, when all of a sudden, you know, everything gets a little tighter, and your decision making is very pivotal to the outcome of this game. At that point, whether it's the players, coaches, whatever, I feel like the 49ers kind of shrink in that moment. And now we've seen it multiple times in Super Bowls, games you felt like they should win. Uh, we've seen, again, just throughout the stat about, you know, when they are leading in these games this season and then losing those games. Like those teams happen. I mean, those things happen a lot of times to teams that you feel like maybe are like underprepared. I think they're prepared. But there's some kind of decision making in the process. Uh, I'd say maybe two years ago, I spoke with this. She's like a uh, like a sports psychologist, right? Mental mental health mental coach. That's what they call them. But they're like mental performance coaches. And there has to do there's there's something with the performance, the mental aspect of the 49ers performance that's off. So whether it's Brock Purdy, whether it's Kyle Shanahan, whether it's you know an offensive tackle that maybe is missing the block in this moment, like what's triggering him? to not be able to execute his job in that moment as opposed to maybe when things are going well and all of a sudden you're in the groove, I'm doing good. Like how can they always kind of tap into being in that groove? Wink, you mentioned McCaffrey and you mentioned Kittle and there's been some injuries for the 49ers this year. And, you know, that's why it's so frustrating when you look at the 49ers season last year and they're in the Super Bowl and they had such good injury luck all year long. This year, the injury luck's going the other way a little bit. Um, it hasn't been catastrophic injury wise. I tend to not want to bl- blame the injuries because it's like, okay, you had no Kittle this week. You can't run the ball without George Kittle. You know what I mean? Like a Kyle Shanahan offense, the, a Mike Shanahan offense, a Shanahan offense, not being able to run the ball because one player's not there. And we people were blaming Christian McCaffrey. Well, they were running the ball fine without Christian McCaffrey too, right? So you miss Kittle, but you had McCaffrey back. You list, you miss Ayuk, but you got a first round wide receiver. Juwan Jennings been your best wide receiver. You still got Debo Samuel, still got Trent Williams. There are plenty of good football players on this team. So I can't really blame injuries. Would you blame injuries on it? Do you do you look at the 49ers and say, oh, without this player, they can't be good? And if that's the case, then how good is your offense truly if you need nine pro bowlers? It's like I think a lot of coaches could do some work with that, right? Yeah, I mean, you mentioned the injuries, and you have to mention them because they're part of the game. But every team has injuries, right? I just think it's – one thing and then it just starts stacking up right and then so you have that you have the penalties they had nine more penalties in that game against the seahawks like it's it's just undisciplined football it's bad special teams jordan mason going up to catch a ball and it bouncing off his basically off out of his hands and luckily going out of bounds on a kickoff like it's a lot of little things like that that make me feel like maybe this isn't a very good football team i want to believe that they are i want them to go out 
and win football games. But when you're injured and then the backups aren't performing, then then you look for that scapegoat. When your offense isn't clicking like we've seen in the past over the past few years, then you go and you blame Kyle Shanahan, right? So there's all these – we're looking to point the finger. We're looking for reasons why, and it might just not be the 49ers year, right? I mean, I hate to say that because it's not over. They can go on a run. This is They still have a lot of talent on both sides of the ball. So hopefully they can go get it done, but they got to go into Green Bay now and take on a, a Packers team that's won five out of six. And it's sitting there seven and three. Like they're they're not a bad football team. But all those things being said, they're not that far out of a playoff spot either, right? They're sitting tenth in the NFC, only a few wins back of a wild card. So if you can find a way to beat Green Bay this week with the injuries, because Nick Bosa is probably not going to play, right? I mean, that's you, you look at his hip, you look at how he's hobbling around out there. You got to scheme something up on defense to get some pressure without him on the field. He's off the field. Seattle goes down and scores two touchdowns. But, you know, that happened two other times against the Rams and the Cardinals in the last two minutes of the game with Nick Bosa on the field. So it, you can't look at injuries and be like, that's the only reason it's happening. It sucks, and it does hurt your football team, but other guys got to step up. They're all professionals out there. Next, let's talk about that. Bosa, what does that loss mean for the San Francisco 49ers in this Packers week? And really, uh, the Niners might need to pack it up. If they can't go to Green Bay and get that win next. The final episode of today's, the final segment of today's episode of Lockdown 49ers brought to you by Hillsdale College. Time is our most precious commodity, so don't waste it scrolling through the same mind-numbing content for hours and hours. How can you spend it wisely to improve yourself? Our sponsor, Hillsdale College, is offering more than 40 free, that's right, free online courses including history, economics, the great works of literature. Did you study these things in school? Have you studied them recently? Probably not. Or even if you did, maybe it's time for a refresher. Time and technology have changed. History, uh, not a lot of change in there. So all of Hillsdale courses are self-paced so that you can start whenever and tune in wherever. Plus, you can go deeper with readings, quizzes, discussions, or just enjoy the lectures. So go right now to hillsdale.edu slash locked on to enroll there's no cost and it's easy to get started that's hillsdale.edu slash locked on to register hillsdale.edu slash locked on man i i tend to think and we we talk about this a lot in the off season and there's arguments about who's the most important player on the football team you know uh, what goes what doesn't without certain players and I've always said, if I'm drafting from 49ers players, Nick Bosa is number one. I draft them ahead of Christian McCaffrey. I draft them ahead of Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy might be two because quarterback is that important. But we've seen seasons where Nick Bosa wasn't on the 49ers. And what do those seasons look like? Not great, right? 2018 before he shows up. Uh, and I remember the Niners drafted Mish Wisnowski in the fourth round. And you know you know how I feel about drafting special punters in the, the third and fourth round. Not, not, um, not great, in my opinion. But Mitch Wiss now has been a good punter. You know, it's not it's not the player; it's the it's the uh, process that, that I have a problem with with that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, and who knows? Maybe Mitch Wiss is the reason the Niners lost last week, right? Wait, but twenty two yard net punt from O'Donnell <laughs> in crunch time. Is all I'm saying. My thought at the time was, "Wow, Niners, you're so good after being the second worst team in the NFL." You're so good that you're going to draft a punter in the fourth round and you're 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 done building your team. That's what you're telling me. He's like, "Oh, we, we're so good everywhere. We're going to draft a punter in the fourth round." Then they went to the Super Bowl. I was like, "Okay, maybe you are good." But why did they why were they so much better? Is because they had a pass rush because they had a Nick Bosa brought in D Ford. He had six and a half sacks that year. Didn't last long for Ford with all his his injuries obviously, but that juggernaut defensive line has been a calling card for the 49ers. And I think they've lacked on the defensive line, even with Bosa this year. They haven't been that dominating, scary defense and defensive front that they've been in the past. And you take Bosa away from that. And that worries me a little bit. And now you got to go win what is now. And this has been multiple times this season. You say, this is the biggest game of the year. Well, now it's the new biggest game of the year against the Packers. And I'm going to bring up um, a, uh, a little statistic and a little chart to to the the diagrams that and shows how how important this week is against the Packers, but yeah, now you have to go do it without Nick Bosa. That's worrisome for me, Croc. Uh, looking at this Niners team and seeing it with and without McCaffrey, is there any doubt that Bosa is the most important player for this football team? 
I, I think it feels like that watching, you know, one half of, of football against Seattle and you saw some of the breakdowns, but I kind of pumped the brakes on that. I, I, I do agree that in previous years or even before the season started, if you said, hey, there's one guy on this team, like who who would you draft? I'll probably say, I'll probably Nick Bosa. You know, you got to have an edge rusher uh, because that's what they say. When you're building your teams, you need three things. A quarterback, somebody to protect the quarterback, and somebody to rush the quarterback. And I think Nick Bosa is near the top of that list, right? I, of course, you have to start with the quarterback. Then you probably go Trent Williams, Nick Bosa, or whatever order you have of those three. But having them out there, I think it makes a big difference. If you have an entire week to prepare to play without Nick Bosa, can you do it? And I'd say this. Defensively, I think it's 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 a little not easier, but you can kind of cover up not having Nick Bosa for a game. You could send different type of blitz. You can give different type of looks. You know, you can send extra pressure. Obviously, that uh, you have you end up having like less numbers on the back end, so there might be some windows. But if your blitz gets there, then you'll be fine. I think it does allow them to play teams a little bit more honest and straight up without having to send extra pressure. But you can you can figure out how to get around that for a week. Now you start talking about two weeks, three weeks, especially with having the team coming up like the Buffalo Bills and Josh Allen. That's when you can get into a lot of trouble not having Nick Bosa out there kind of harassing Josh Allen every time he drops back to throw the ball. Yeah, I think right, when you look at that, go ahead. Go ahead, Week. I'm going to bring something up while you talk. Well, I was going to mention, you know, you talk about what's most important on a football team. There's a reason you pay quarterbacks and defensive ends the most, right? Like they are, they, they quarterbacks hold the ball the most. They're in charge of the ball. They're the, you know, running the offense. And the pass rushers are the guys that try to disrupt that. So I'm with you. I think. Hopefully, Croc, I hope you're right. I hope they can scheme up something they've got all week to kind of prepare for not having Nick Bosa. But Jordan Love, if he's looking healthy and, you know, he's starting to, to feel a little bit better and he can move around in that pocket, it could be really tough to, to beat this football team with no Nick Bosa this weekend. How important is the Packers game this week? And I can't wait for our conversation. It's always fun. And I know our listeners love to hate Peter Bukowski of Locked On Packers in this week's uh, crossover episode, and he's probably going to be smug. He's probably going to have some confidence this week against a potentially Nick bosa less struggling 49ers team. Uh, this is how important this game is. I put a graph on the screen, and I'll explain it to our audio listeners as well. Um, this is from Pro Football Focus. This is the odds to make the playoffs uh, in week uh, going into week 12, the odds to make the playoffs, and if you see the, the, the lines that are on the graph, it's the odds before and after a win or a loss for those teams to make the playoffs. And the 49ers have the biggest swing. Arizona Cardinals swing is also really big. And I think those things are tied together, right? Um, teams like the lions and the Eagles are feeling really good. There's not much they can do to not make the playoffs at this point. And then you go look at the bottom end of the graph in the NFC and you got the saints. And of course the giants and the Cowboys and the Panthers and, you know, those teams, uh, there's not much they can do to make the playoffs, you know, so the whether they win or lose this week doesn't have a big swing. Uh, but there are some teams with bigger swings, like all the NFC West teams, the the uh, the the Rams and the Seahawks and their odds to make the playoffs a little bit lower than the 49ers and Cardinals already. The Cardinals and the Niners, though, have the biggest swings. And if the 49ers beat the Packers this week, they have a little bit over 50 percent chance to make the playoffs. And, you know, about 54%, it looks like, to make the playoffs if they beat the Packers. If they lose to the Packers, that drops all the way down under 15% chance to make the playoffs. So, essentially, what's that? what that's telling me is this is a playoff game right now in Week 12 against the Green Bay Packers. Now, the Cardinals have a big swing, but even if they lose, it only drops them to 40%. And the Niners would jump ahead of the Cardinals percentage-wise if the Niners win, Cardinals lose. And if the Cardinals win, their chances jump up over 75% to make the playoffs. So the 49ers, uh, it's a lot more dire. And you want to be, you know, 55% chance to make the playoffs and not 15% chance or worse to make the playoffs. And that's the difference in the swing if the 49ers win or lose this game against the Packers. Well, if you yeah, look I think at we that, all start... know. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead Wink. Well, I was going to talk about the Bucks too, who, who hasn't been even mentioned in this. Uh, they've lost four straight, but look at how they're still right in it. And you know why they're right in it, too? You look at their upcoming schedule. Giants, Panthers, Raiders, Chargers, Cowboys, Panthers, Saints. Like, they probably have the easiest record remaining out of anyone on this entire chart. So wow. that's got to worry you, too, 
as a 49er fan, not just the, the NFC West, but that's that's that crucial probably number seven wild card spot right there. And I don't I don't like it. I mean, this this chart right here just shows how important this upcoming game is. And I remember earlier in the season, 49ers have dropped a couple games, and a lot of players were saying, you know, this, you know, mathematically is not a must-win game. It feels like a must-win game. This right here, I mean, I feel like there's even more pressure to win yeah. this game right here. I mean, to have your chances go from with a win, you know, around 53% to a loss and go under 15% to make the playoffs for this team, that the 49ers are in dire need of a win right now. Mm -hmm. Good the playoff starts now. 49ers, Packers, there have been some good playoff games in the past. Well, we got a playoff game in November. Niners, Packers, Week 12. More on that matchup later this week. Uh, Wink, always a pleasure chatting with you. Thanks for jumping on here. And uh, uh, let's all hope that Mish Wishnowski comes back and we can get a Wink's wish wash after Week 12 and a big victory for the San Francisco 49ers. Appreciate all the everydayers, all the new listeners as well. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and everywhere you get your podcasts. And Croc and I back tomorrow, right here. Crossover style, Locked On 49ers. See you. I don't buy it.